it's coming in. Right on, King Jesus. No one can hinder me. Right on, King Jesus. No one can hinder me.
Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. I invite our children to come forward, middle school, school first. Middle school, not middle school. Let us extend our hands in blessing on these, the future of our church and our world. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of them. May they hear the passion, the other-centeredness of our Lord Jesus Christ as he communicates to them and to us the blessing of this day. May they hear the word of God in their way that invigorates their life and causes them to live and step out in faith. We ask this blessing through Christ our Lord, let the church say, Amen. And our little ones. We probably don't think of themselves as little ones, but that's okay. Don't they look beautiful? Yeah. But their faces, I need you all to smile. Smile. Smile, 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 guys. Okay. You didn't smile. That's better. Loving God, we give you thanks for the joy that these children inspire in us. Bless them that they hear the word of God in a way that will help them to live and grow and become the people that God has called them to be. And we ask this blessing through Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ears that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back, I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame.
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
give glory to him. Revere him, you descendants of Israel. My God, oh my God, oh my God, why have you abandoned me? Why, oh why have you abandoned me? Why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. To the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. I'd like to invite you to sit as the Gospel Passion is proclaimed. When the hour came, he took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, 
which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the one who is to betray me is on and at this table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that person by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. Jesus said to him, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. Jesus, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die for you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny me three times. He said to them, when I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, nothing, they replied. And Jesus said to them, but now, one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But Jesus replied, it is enough. Then going out, he went as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and healing, Jesus prayed saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. 
Jesus was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When Jesus rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached and in front was one of the 12, a man named Judas. Judas went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day, I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man two was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man, too, was with him, for he also was a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him, saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before Sanhedrin. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. But he replied to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. 
And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Messiah, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds, I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teachings throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was at Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time for he had heard about him being heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign he questioned him at length but he gave him no answer the chief priests and scribes meantime stood by accusing him harshly even herod and his soldiers treated him contentiously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been em enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, you brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to me. So, no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then released. But all together they shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Now Christ had been prison. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? 
I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they had asked, and he handed Jesus over to deal with him as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Syrian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Mm -hmm. Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, they sneered at him. He saved others, let him save himself. If he's the chosen one, the Messiah of God, even the soldiers jeered at him as they approached to offer him wine. They called out, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, this is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, have you no fear of God? For you are condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen. I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. 
It was about now noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle and Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, this man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered from this, for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breast. But all his acquaintances stood a distance including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken down the body, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and led him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which the body had been laid in it, they returned, prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath, according to the commandment. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This season of Lent Church, we at St. Columba Community have been asked to look at radical incarnation. Radical, the root of our being, the womb of our soul. Where have we been through our baptism and this dance of life with the Holy Spirit in our everyday? to make room for the divine so that when people see us and look at us, they see the radical incarnation and face of God. That was our intention for this Lent. So how are we doing? In order for me to take a look at how we were doing, I thought, well, what have we been told this Lent? by those we've had preach the word, 
break open the word so that we could understand the message of the gospel, this Lent on radical incarnation. So being a good teacher, I did a review. I went to the website and listened to every homily since Father Hillary. I invite you to do that these last few days of Lent. It was very inspirational. On the first Sunday of Lent, Father Hillary had the temptations of Jesus. And he looked us in the eye and he said, and where have you been tempted to get off the road, to not follow the path that would enable you to incarnate the word in the womb of your soul? And then we had Father Aiden with this gospel of the transfiguration, one of my favorite gospel stories. And like the disciples, we've been called to the mountaintop. And Jesus was transformed before them. And the skies cleared and the sun shone. And this voice came out saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And Father Aiden said, who have we been listening to? As we make our decision, as we make our choices, has it been choices and decisions that have created room in our soul for the radical incarnation of the divine? And then the next Sunday, we're up to the third Sunday if you're not counting. On the next Sunday of Lent, our brother Barry. Oh yes, he talked about God wants all of us, our mind, our body, and our spirit. You know, God and I in this journey, I've said to God, well, you can have this much. And God laughs at me and says, well, I want this much, Marion. I want more of you than you're willing to give me. He also had the gospel of the barren fig tree. And it was a wonderful gospel where the gardener comes up to the master and says, don't, don't take the tree down. Give it another year. I'm going to take special care of it. And it's going to bear fruit. And that's what happened. And Barry said, who do you have confidence in? Do you have confidence in the God who, who work with us, put a little manure around, kind of feed us, so that we can be the radical incarnation? Or sometimes do we get smug and say, well, I know. I can do it. I know the way. Church, I've been there. We've all been there. We were invited to place our confidence in the God who so radically loves us and who says, your soul is too small. I've got all these blessings I want to give you. I have this abundance I want to lavish on you. Can you create a little more room for me in there so that I can fill you up with the Spirit of God? And then we had our sister, Juliet Eche. What a wonderful homily. And I'm not going to even to attempt to sing like she sang. But she sang and said to us, Order my steps, O Lord. Order, lead me, guide me along the way. How have your steps been ordered? who's been leading and guiding you along the way. Because she said to us, unless we've got our hand in the hand of God, we're going to give in to the system. And the system's going to win. And Jesus came to turn the system upside down. In fact, he really came to turn the system right side up. And so order our steps, O oh Lord. And then Father John, last week, had the story of the woman caught in adultery. Can't you imagine the guys hiding behind the curtains and stuff, just setting this all up so that they, they could catch her and trick Jesus? That's what happened. And Father John asked us a really important question. Father John said, who in that story does God love? 
and I'm sitting in my chair in there and said, well, certainly the woman, but I don't know about those Pharisees and scribes. And Father John said to us, God loves everyone in that story. God loves everyone in that story. And I sat in my chair and said, Oh, Jesus, does that mean I have to love the 45th president? <laughs> <laughs> well. And Jesus said to me, yes. You don't have to love what he does, but you need to love him. He's one of my people. Because that's what radical incarnation is about. It's about being able to look in the mirror or to look at the other and see the face, the love, the compassion of God. So church, here we are at the end of another Lent. We're getting ready for our high holy days. We're getting ready to celebrate the reason why we're even here gathered in this church. If Jesus had not risen after he died, we'd have no reason to be here. We'd be home trying to set our TV to tape the next game of the Warriors. <laughs> I'm the one in my house responsible that, that those games get taped. <laughs> we celebrate Holy Thursday. The day that Jesus gathered his disciples, blessed the bread and the wine, and gave us his whole self. And he says to us, church, are you willing to give your whole self to me and the message of the gospel? like I've done for you. And on Good Friday, the gospel that we heard, Jesus died on that cross. Now, Jesus could have wiggled out of it, you know? All they wanted him to do was tone down his message, not, not be so critical of the system and say they were okay. Jesus could have done that. And he didn't. He had the integrity to live the message that his father, mother, God gave him to bring. And he wouldn't do anything less than that, even if it meant giving up his life. And Jesus says to you and I, this is, you're going to suffer too? Can you take up your cross? Where's your integrity? How have you integrated the message of the gospel into the womb of your soul so that the words of the, your mouth and the look of your face and the things that you do are a reflection of God? Quite a challenge. And then we have Easter Sunday, when we can say that word again that I can't say right now. <laughs> Where Jesus says, I'm back. And Jesus says, Mary of Magdala, he, he sends her to go tell the disciples who are in a room with a locked door and afraid that he's risen. And sometimes, church, we think that's the end of the story. Oh, no, it's not the end of the story. Because you see, church, it's the beginning of the story. You and I are being asked for the rest of our lives, for our every day, to allow and be a part of radical incarnation. It takes a lifetime. 
I could sit back and say, well, you know, I'm 80 years old now. I've, I've done enough of my inner spiritual work. <laughs> I get to click the TV and eat the popcorn or whatever. Uh, God says, Marion, you have no idea the lavish love, the blessings and promises I want to pour into your soul. You're not done yet. You know, church, we're not done yet. Radically incarnating the word, no matter how well we've done so far. Because our God says, oh, I have all this to give to you. And so let us continue as we come to the days of Triduum and celebrate our high holy days to remember that we have just <coughs> begun to incarnate the word because of the lavish love of our God. Amen. Amen. And in the spirit of that radical incarnation, I want you to pick these up. Each year since the Pope has been in the United States in Philadelphia, we at St. Columba have sent the Pope a letter asking him to apologize on behalf of the whole Roman Catholic Church for racism against African Americans and people uh, of color. And we've sent that letter every year. We haven't got a response, but we'll keep sending the letter every Easter. And we're also sending a letter to our bishop that we've been working on, a group of us have been working on. Everybody's had an opportunity. In South Africa, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was a vital part of uh, that country healing itself. And I think a vital part of us beginning to heal and move on is in that same spirit. So, this is from me to you. Let's celebrate our Easter with truth and reconciliation. In your opinion, withholding nothing back, please rank from one to 10 in order of your importance, with one being the most important, 10 being the least, the areas that the institutional Roman Catholic Church needs to apologize to you, the people of God. And I'm going to give you a minute to, you know, you, if you've only got one, put one down. This is uh, an anonymous survey. You can take it home with you. You can take it home with you, and you can email it to me. Uh, or bring it back to church and over the triduum. Okay, you're a smart guy. I'm sure there's an anonymous way that you can send it to me, but I'll probably know it's you anyway, Mario, by your handwriting. But that is not, if you want to write more, but in just a few moments, so that the homily at Easter time is coming from a truthful space of us, and there's a lot of people who come to church at Christmas and Easter. And maybe somebody will hear something that has kept them away from us in our worshiping community that will allow them to come and stay, that we are recognizing that we're not a perfect church and that it maybe even if Jesus does come back, he'll go, not what I meant, people. Not what I meant. That's a possibility. I'm not saying he would say that. So... I'm, I'm inviting us for the next minute or so, at least read this, and uh, if people have pens with them uh, to share, but just take a little moment for radical incarnation, and that's why how we're doing it this time. There's a blank one over here. Oh, okay. Mark, please.
behind you. Let us all stand together as we offer our prayers and petitions for ourselves and for our world. Your response will be, saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. For the people of God, the church and all its leaders, May we be models of contrition, beacons of light, and messengers of mercy, we pray. Saving God, God, show us us your mercy. mercy. For our elect, Joanna and David, and our candidates, Ed and Walt, as they enter their final week of preparation to celebrate the Easter sacraments, we pray. Saving Saving God, show us us your mercy. mercy. For all who are held unjustly, particularly victims of human trafficking, may their dignity be restored. We pray. Saving God, show us your mercy. For the peoples of the Middle East and the Holy Land, especially those who suffer persecution and humiliation, we also remember those who have asked for prayer on our parish website. We pray. Saving God, show us your mercy. For all who have been condemned to death, for those unjustly imprisoned, and for those oppressed by racism, we pray. Saving God, show us your mercy. For the earth, may we be sensitive to the effects of global warming on the peoples of developing countries, we pray. Saving God, God, show show us us your your mercy. mercy. For those who have died, we remember Winnie Augusta, Betty and Aaron Turner, and Linda Moss. We also remember those who have been executed or who have died by violence. Please pray for James Williams, who died last Wednesday, brother-in-law of Joanne and Yvonne Bank. We pray. Saving God, show us your mercy. For whom and for what else shall we pray? We pray for, we had two funerals here at St. Columba yesterday, one for Lisa Smith, who was, uh, participated and helped a lot with fundraising for the board of St. Martin de Porres, of happy memory of that school and what it attempted to do. And we pray for her and all those who loved her. We also pray for our sister, Cressida Reed's brother, older brother, who passed away a few days ago in a courageous battle. Um, And we give thanks to God for him and for his older brother and for the life that both of these children of God celebrated. And as people of hope, we pray for all and with all who grieve. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Saving God, show us your mercy.
Saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. I'd like to pray for a student of mine, who, a uh, young lady who was violently assaulted this week, and uh, for all college students and young women, each semester it seems like it's on the rise and doesn't maybe get reported or shared in the church. We pray to the Lord. Saving God, show us your mercy. David, uh, show us your mercy. God, show us your mercy. I'd like to pray in a special way for uh, Mario's wife. Uh, she was walking through the mission a few weeks ago dressed in a Mexican dress. And... Uh, this white guy yelled at her a, a, a negative uh, racial slur, and it really took her back and really hurt her deeply. So uh, for all of those, for her in particular, but for all who experienced that type of treatment, and for an end to it, and for us to be conscious of these issues in our lives and to love and support those around us that need that love and support, and work for the beloved community where that doesn't happen anymore. We can only pray. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. I like to pray for Clem Daniels, a great football Raiders football player, a great community man, a great spiritual man, most important. For this we pray. Saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. I'd like to pray for all who have birthdays and other loved ones who will celebrate yesterday. Saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. Saving God, show us your mercy. I'd like to pray for Sister Marian Castelluccio. That's the last time she'll be preaching with us for a while. She's heading off to the real Holy Land, which is Ireland soon. And I pray that she's not really taping the Warriors because videotapes don't work anymore. You record, Sister. Thank you. I just want to keep you updated for the next time. May God bless her on her journey and uh, come back to us safely. Saving God, show us your mercy. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this beautiful day. 
Let us be enlightened by celebrating your passion, walking the walk and talking the talk. You have given us the grace to do so in word and sacrament. Let us be the people you call us to be as we support one another in building up the beloved community through Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of that love and peace. Peace, 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 Hey, stop fighting with your brother. Pastor Peace Paul. Peace, sister. Peace, peace. Hi, peace. Peace, sister. Peace. Peace, brother. La Paz. La Paz. La Paz. How are you? Good, how are you? Peace. 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 Peace, sister. Peace. Peace, sister. Peace. 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 Peace, sister. Hey, peace, Father. Yeah. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. peace Father. Peace. Peace, peace Father. Peace, peace with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father. Got you. Peace, peace, peace. Oh, so peace. sorry. Peace. Peace. Oh, peace. 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 With you, Father. Peace, sister. Peace. peace. God bless you. You too. Peace. 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 Hey, sister. Peace. 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 Sorry for your loss. Thank you, Father. Peace, 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 peace. Peace, sister. Yes, you too, sister. Peace be with you. Peace. Mary Louise. Peace. We're just standing there, just waiting on stuff to happen. Peace. 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 Sorry for your loss. Peace. Peace, peace, brother. Peace. Peace. Peace, 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 okay, uh, peace, peace, brother, peace, peace, yes, <laughs> Please cook. Hi, peace. Father. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. Oh, we got with you. you. Peace. 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 Peace, sister. Peace. Peace. La Paz. La Paz. Peace. Peace. Peace, Paz. Peace. 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 Peace.
Please, 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 please. Please, sister. Be good. He insulted me. Ah. I said, when you come up to Maryland, come visit. You got a free place to stay. I ain't going out there. Please be with you. Please be with you. Please be with you. Please for the <laughs> Holy people of God, let us bless. Let us continue with a blessing. And let us extend our hands in blessing. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for our, your presence among us in the image and likeness of everyone. And you call us to be like you in sharing and caring for one another as we attempt to live out the gospel of love at this place and at this time. Through Christ our Lord, let the church say,
Blessing of God be on these gifts. Where's the gifts? Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord our God. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by the sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all of the angels, archangels, saints and dominions, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and gave you, Father, thanks and praise, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more, Father, gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples and friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. My sisters and brothers, the mystery of faith. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you and to one another. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, healed of all unnatural divisions. Remember people of good faith made in your image and likeness throughout the world. Lord, remember your church also spread throughout this earth. Bring her to the fullness of charity and love together with our blessed Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, the clergy, and the entire family your son has gained for you. Remember also our sisters and brothers and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy and love, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and saints, St. Saint Columba, and our saint-in-waiting, Sister Thea Bowman, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I thought you guys were going to leave Mary Louise all on her own, sitting in the front row. Not Francine? No, not our Francine. We give thanks to God for the gift of each and every one of us to come together in community and family, and as our brother that teaches us how to pray to his Father and ours. With one voice we pray. Our Oh, 
My sisters and brothers, this is the Lamb of God, the Christ, our brother who models for us how it is to live and to love and to die in this world. It is he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only so the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Christ. The body of Christ. 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blessing of God be with you. The blessing of God be with you. The blessing of God be with you. The purple the crystal. The blessing of God be with you. The body of Christ. 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 God be with you. Purple to Christa. The blessing of God be with you. The body of Christ. The blessing of God be with you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Mr. Beasley. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ was the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blessing of God be with you. The blessing of God be with you. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Christ. Amen. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to the hope of what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us all to where you call. Through Christ our Lord, let the church say, Amen. Did Joan sneak out yet? Oh my God, really? And I was going to sing happy birthday to her? Oh, well, I got her good, didn't it? It's on the internet. She'll be able to go back and look at it and go, oh. Okie doke then. Um, who's visiting for the first time? First timers? You have to stand up, sister. It's really not that bad. First timers? Just two first timers. Three, four. Come on up here this way. It's easier to do it. Than... Come on. We just line up here and it's okay. Anybody hiding? Who's hiding? Who? Yeah, that's his, yeah, but he's been here before. He was confirmed here. Yeah, okay, see? Is this lady you're with, has she been here before? Oh, let's see, I noticed these things, okay. Okay, we'll start with the tallest one here. What's your name? John T. And where are you from? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, and your name? Jason, And Las Vegas. Wonderful. Maria, I'm from Morgan Hill. Morgan Hill, welcome. Kristen from Chicago. From Chicago, the Windy City. Tawana, Chicago. Chicago. Colby, Chicago. Rose from the South Pacific. The South Pacific. Party on, sister. 
Okay. Let's extend our hands and blessing over these, our sisters and brothers. Bless them and continue to know that they're always welcome in this place, this diverse place, this place of love, this place that is the universal church and microcosm. Bless everyone here and know they're always welcome through Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. give them a round of applause. Okay, since it's your birthday, who else is selling, celebrating you, something you can celebrate in church? Something, oh, just you. Who? Venus? What are you celebrating, Venus? Okay. Okay, everybody who's celebrating something, come up here. I'm not running all over the place. Birthdays. What happened to your hands? Don't tell me lies. I, I saw you coming up to communion. I wrote on them. Okay. Because you saw me hesitating, didn't you? Okay. Are you okay? Okay. Who else? Okay. Somebody's birthday? So what's your whole name and how old are you? Well, how old are you? She can spell it. Two, three. Four. Four. <laughs> but, but her birthday, how old will she be on April 20th? How, oh, how old will you be on April 20th? Five. Five. And what's your name? Selena. Selena. Awesome. Tina. And I'm uh, celebrating my... I won't be here on my birthday, so I want to come up and get blessings from the church. Okay, party on. <laughs> my name is Joseph Lewis, and I'm 22 today. 22, okay. My name is Marco, and uh, uh, it's my aunt, I'll be 11. You had to think about it? <laughs> Venus, okay, wait, it's too close. Okay, okay. Venus, 1955, date of my birth. Okay, okay. I am Karen, 1972. I'm just going with that. <laughs> 55, that's a good. No, what are you celebrating, Roger? Your 71st birthday. Your 71st birthday. <laughs> March the 21st. Okay. Okay. Same day as Maria. Okay. Okay, Roger. Okie doke. Let's extend our hand. No, that's we're not. Well, bless you. Bless, bless. Okay. No, no, let's sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everybody. Happy birthday to you. Give them a big round of applause. You're done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Holy Week is coming up in the Triduum. Well, we begin with, uh, tomorrow night, our uh, Seder meal, so uh, it's in the hall at what time? Six o'clock. It's a wonderful way to celebrate and begin with the Catholic version of Passover. And we try to follow it as closely as possible, but we don't do the three hour thing. We do the short truncated version of the Catholic thing of the Passover, but it's a good way to celebrate the week. And then on Holy Thursday, the Triduum, which is one liturgy, from the moment it opens on Holy Thursday night, it closes at the end of the vigil. Uh, all are welcome to come and participate. Uh, the, Holy, the rice bowl offerings will be brought, or should be, are invited to be brought to the offertory procession on Holy Thursday, but we will take them at any time. Uh, and if you have collected monies, just put to St. Columba and the memo will be CRS. Um, the other thing about this is that Christ the King recently in this past few weeks collected $55,000 from one parish out beyond the tunnels. And the pastor and my friend Brian, jo or Brian Joyce, Brian Timothy, drove up to the St. Thomas More Catholic Church in Paradise and the priest just was overcome by the fact that another parish community would love them so much. And the priest there, the pastor said that the money would go directly to the people and not to church buildings, 
because insurance of the Catholic Church will take care of that. So we are going to give our monies on Holy Thursday. I know it won't be 55, but it will be the widow's might, and it'll be our response. If you have any old palms or anything that can burn in the Paschal fire, nothing plastic, please. Uh, please bring it along so that you can dispose of holy, holy th items in the Paschal fire. That's the appropriate way to deal with them. And please bring along flowers on Holy Saturday mornings, colored flowers in the name of loved ones so that we can decorate the church colorfully. There will be no morning mass on Holy Thursday and Good Friday anywhere in the Catholic Church. So don't be showing up at eight o'clock on those days because there won't be mass. The live from Judea. Mark your calendar for the Easter pageant presented by the parish young people on Sunday the 28th at 12.30. Come for the Easter story, stay for the lunch and Easter egg hunt, Easter egg hunt for the kids. And lastly, the last uh, social justice forum will be on Tuesday, on Easter week, on the Tuesday the 23rd at 7 p.m. And I want to give a big shout out for all of those who did all of those forums all the way out, and especially Palm Sims, who organized all of them. So we give thanks to God. Everything else is on the website. And have a very holy uh, good week. And we are here for you in this community. And of course, Good Friday seems to bring out more women and more nuns that you could shake a stick at. I wonder why that is on Good Friday at St. Columba. I don't want to say why, because we're streaming and half the world can see what we're saying and doing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.